In today's video, I'm going to cover the best Titan build for 2021, featuring bottom tree hammers. This build was completely overshadowed by Behemoth, but with the nerfs it's received, I expect to see the subclass get a lot more attention in the future. This bottom tree hammers build has some of the best synergy and kill chaining potential of any subclass in Destiny 2, and a super that is just as powerful to go along with it. Once you understand the synergy of how this subclass works and the impact of sunspots on your neutral game, you'll be going from kill to kill like nothing, but we're going to talk more about that later. Because of how well each ability works together, each section of the video is critical to mastering this build, so make sure you stick around to get the most out of it in the Crucible. If at any point you find this video helpful, consider dropping a like as it really helps me out. With that, let's get into it. Before diving into the main aspects of this build, we need to cover the basics of the subclass and the options that we will select that will give us the strongest foundation for bottom tree hammers. This includes our jump, barricade, and grenade. Starting with our titan jumps, we have three options, high lift, strafe lift, and catapult lift. For Titan, all of these jumps aren't bad, but for PvP, Strafe Lift is going to be my personal recommendation. Strafe Lift allows you to Titan skate around the map and keeps you closest to the ground out of all the Titan jumps. For those that don't know, Titan skating is when you string multiple jumps together to gain momentum and propel yourself forward around the map. This allows you to get around the map very quickly, and because Strafe Lift keeps you close to the ground, keeps you behind cover and less likely to be picked off by the enemy. Ultimately, you can choose any of these jumps and be in decent shape, but Strafe Lift is going to give you the best combination of bursts with the least amount of lift out of all these options. For our barricade, we have two options, Towering Barricade and Rally Barricade. I won't spend much time on the Rally Barricade because in most PvP scenarios, you're not going to find much success with it, especially against players of higher skill level. Towering Barricade, on the other hand, is going to be the easy choice here. Towering Barricade offers arguably the most utility of any class ability because of how many different ways it can be used, but I'm going to focus on three main ways that will help you get the most out of it. The most obvious use is going to be defensively to provide you cover and buy you extra time to get your health back. There is nothing more frustrating than having a Titan one shot than seeing them get their barricade off and regenerate back to full health. Another great way to use your barricade is to gain more information. You do this by popping it proactively on corners and using the shield to survey how the enemy team is set up. This allows you to determine what is the best way to engage with your enemy and not be cut off guard by multiple enemies. The final way and my personal favorite is turning this defensive ability into an offensive one. You do this by using your barricade to bait in overly aggressive enemies and using the fact that the barrier isn't solid against them. Pro tip on how to do this? Try weaving in and out of your barricade or sliding back and forth in it to get the shield to absorb a majority of your enemy's shots. This gives you complete control of the engagement and gets your enemy panicking since you can peek out and take shots knowing you have the cover to protect you. Overall, the utility of Towering Barricade isn't something to be ignored. When used in the ways I suggested, it can help you turn the tables on any engagement. Next we have three options for grenades, incendiary grenades, thermite grenades, and fusion grenades. All three of these grenades have their uses and differ in how they do damage. You have the incendiary grenade, which can do up to 120 damage on the initial explosion, and then burns enemies for up to 30 damage. This grenade is a great option, especially if you're used to grenades that function similar to grenades from other games. Next we have the thermite grenade, which has a wave effect and does up to 79 damage on the first hit, and up to 51 on the second hit. This grenade releases four waves of fire, lasting a total of about five seconds, and the thermite grenade is great for blocking off pathways or catching enemies off guard since they aren't expecting multiple waves of damage. I've had multiple engagements where an enemy peeks behind cover, dodging the first wave, then peeks back out and gets killed by the second wave. Lastly, we have the fusion grenade, which does 150 damage when you stick your opponent. I don't recommend this option since it's only good for single target use, and sometimes even if you get the stick, they'll still give the enemy enough time to still kill you. For PvP, you can't go wrong with either the incendiary or thermite grenade. Personally, I love the thermite grenade and find it has more overall utility than the incendiary since you can block off so many areas of a map. And because of its multiple ways of damage, you can get multiple kills from one grenade, making it my go-to option on this build. Getting into what really makes this build powerful, and that's going to be sunspots and the impact they can have on your neutral game. When you master sunspots, you become a human wrecking ball in the crucible. First, I need to highlight the different abilities in this subclass, then break down how they all tie together so we can understand all the ways to make sunspots. Starting with Soul Invictus, which states solar ability kills restore your health, grenade melee ability and some warrior kills leave a deadly sunspot in their wake. Then you have Endless Siege, which we'll dive into more later. Hammers create a sunspot on impact. While standing on sunspots, you throw hammers faster. Lastly, you have Sun Warrior. Passing through a sunspot causes your grenade and melee abilities to recharge faster and your super to last longer. It also increases the damage your weapons deal. Knowing how to make sunspots is key for becoming a kill chaining machine in this build. The first way to create a sunspot is by gaining either a grenade or melee ability kill. Then once you do that and create your sunspot, you want to immediately stand inside it or at the very least run through it, which will give you a Sun Warrior buff that lasts five seconds and gives a 20% damage boost to all your weapons. Pro 
tip here, the five second timer doesn't start decreasing until you leave the sunspot. And I recommend treating your sunspot almost like a well of radiance for Warlock. So after getting a kill that creates a sunspot, try to engage your enemies while standing in that sunspot. This keeps the sun warrior buff going and allows your grenade and melee abilities to charge back even faster. Then once you secure a kill from in your sunspot, that should create another sunspot because any kill you get while sun warrior is active will create an additional sunspot. Then you run to the next sunspot and continue the cycle. This sets you up to go from sunspot to sunspot with a 20% damage boost and constantly regenerating our grenade and melee abilities, allowing us to use those abilities that also regenerate our health when we get kills. You'll also find a lot of enemies will often run into your sunspots doing additional damage or outright killing them. This creates a kill chaining effect that makes it very difficult to stop in the crucible as you continuously create sunspots and dominate the match. And if you've been finding this video helpful so far, consider subscribing as it's a totally free and easy way to support the channel and make sure you don't miss any future build videos. Next, you have the super for this subclass, which is Hammer of Soul, which allows you to throw multiple hammers that, due to the endless siege perk we mentioned earlier, create sunspots on impact. This super is one of the best dueling supers in Destiny 2 because of the range of the hammers and the overall duration of the super. To get the most out of the super, you need to remember how sunspots impact it. First, when you pop your super, it immediately creates a sunspot where you stand, increasing the duration allowing you to throw hammers faster. Use this to your advantage. It's very easy to pop the super and start holding W. Try when popping your super to use it initially in place to throw ranged hammers to get a couple kills as this will help you maximize the duration since we are still standing in a sunspot. Another pro tip is as you do get kills, remember that those kills will create sunspots. You want to be either running through those sunspots or stopping and standing directly in them as you move throughout the map with your super. I specifically like to use sunspots as I try to assess where the enemy team is spawning. Then once I see the pings on my radar, I will press forward. This will allow you to maximize the duration of your super and ensure that you also come out of super with the damage buff of some warrior activated to keep the sunspot chains going. Whether it be your super or your neutral game, if you focus on using sunspots to chain kills and extend your super, you're going to have an advantage over every other subclass in Destiny 2. For weapon loadouts on this subclass, I found more aggressive loadouts tend to be a more effective option. That's not to say that you can't snipe on Titan, but it just so happens to be that a lot of the abilities and even exotics on this class cater to more aggressive loadouts and playstyles. But before getting into specific weapons, one perk I recommend on all weapons for this build is Surplus. Surplus boosts handling, stability, and reload speed for each charged ability, and when we stand in sunspots, this is going to recharge two of these abilities quicker. This creates an even greater synergy on this build, as now our sunspots are not only giving our weapons a damage boost, but helping improve their performance across the board. Getting into specific weapons, I recommend 120 RPM hand cannon, as this is going to be your most effective option. If you're using your sunspots effectively, you should often have some warrior in its 20% damage buff active, and with a 120 hand cannon, that's going to allow you to two tap a lot. You're using Usual suspects here will be your bottom dollar, which I'm using in most of this footage, Igneous Hammer, and True Prophecy. I recommend these particular 120 hand cannons since they all can roll Rampage, will just create more opportunities for you to two tap your opponents. For special weapons, you're going to be looking at aggressive frame shotguns, and this archetype has the most consistent one hit kill range out of all shotgun archetypes, but exotics like Duality and Chaperone could scratch that itch for people who like precision weapons that are similar to snipers. For heavy, I don't have much preference here, but lately I've been using Wardcliffe Coil is a great way to take down supers or a large amount of enemies on a point, but LMGs like Commemoration can also be a good option. Even if you don't choose the weapons I recommend, try to lean towards weapons that will maximize the effectiveness of your sunspots and by default, your effectiveness in this build. I also have a community discord where you can ask questions, show off your favorite weapons, builds, and even Destiny fashion, so consider joining using the link below to link up with other Destiny players. Your character stats have a huge influence on how you play the game and impact everything from how fast you recover from a fight to how quickly your grenade recharges. With this in mind, I'm going to cover all the stats and the recommended amount you should invest in each one to get the most out of this build. Starting with mobility, this increases your movement speed and jump height, or more importantly, your strafe speed. High mobility can make things like peak shotting behind cover feel a little more fluid and keep you from feeling like you're in quicksand. So I typically recommend for mobility as a nice middle ground to support having a faster strafe speed, but not sacrificing too much from your other stats. Next, we have Resilience, which for Titan also directly ties into how long the cooldown is for our Titan Barricade. For Resilience, I recommend aiming for 5 Resilience, as this keeps 120 hand cannons from being able to kill you with 1 headshot and 2 body shots, which can come in clutch in 1v1 duels. 5 Resilience is also the sweet spot for our Barricade cooldown, since it's going to bring that Barricade cooldown to 30 seconds, meaning you're going to have it for a large majority of your engagements. Recovery is next and is easily the most important stat on any build in my opinion, since it directly impacts your survivability. 
What recovery does is reduce the amount of time it takes for your health to start regenerating back to full. This is critical since higher recovery can shave off precious seconds of the time it takes for you to be full health. This can be the difference between you entering your engagement at full health or at half health. This directly impacts how effective we are in this build since it's very focused on chaining multiple kills together and keeping those sunspots going, meaning you're going to want to be as close to full health as possible for each engagement. Higher recovery also complements the health regeneration you get from solar ability kills as well, further supporting our survivability. And because of everything I just mentioned is why I recommend 10 recovery for this build. Next, we have discipline, which impacts our grenade cooldown and strength, which impacts our melee cooldown. For both of these stats, I usually recommend running tier five as this will land the cooldown at about one minute. And because of the ability regen we get from standing in our sunspots, you don't really need to go too much higher than that as you're already going to be getting these abilities very quickly. Intellect is going to be the second most important stat you invest in behind recovery. Intellect controls how long it takes to get your super and can have a huge impact on the game since getting your super even 10 seconds before your opponent can be the difference between a win and a loss. Because of this, I recommend investing anywhere from 8 to 10 in Intellect if you can balance it with your other stats. This should allow you to have a potent neutral game along with a lower overall super cooldown to allow you to get your Hammer of Soul super early and often. For mods, this is going to depend largely on your weapon loadout selection, but the main goal of your mods is to improve the performance and consistency of your weapons. For example, I'm a hand cannon shoddy main, so my helmet mod is hand cannon targeting, my gloves have hand cannon reloader, my chest mod is unflinching hand cannon, and my legs are double shotgun scavengers to help me get more shotgun ammo. Now if you're a sniper main or you like pulses, then you're going to want to use the mods that help those weapons feel as consistent as possible. But regardless of the weapon loadout, a couple of mods I do recommend are our high energy fire, along with taking charge, as taking charge allows you to become charged with light when picking up orbs, and high energy fire gives you a 20% damage boost when charged with light, making these a potent combo. The other two mods I recommend are radiant light, which gives you plus 20 strength, or powerful fringe, which grants you plus 20 mobility. So whatever stat you're lacking, both of these are great ways to get a large amount of free stats. Ideally, the goal of mods is to focus on using mods to enhance the feel of your weapons of choice and improve the overall stat distribution you are aiming for. For Exotics on Titan, you have a couple of options to help improve on the kill chaining aspect of this build. First would be Path of Burning Steps, this exotic gives you a damage boost from solar kills, which pairs great with Bottom Tree Hammers and Igneous Hammer, and would be another perk that could boost our damage. This exotic is great if you don't have enough mods for damage boosting perks, or haven't gotten a 120 hand can to roll with Rampage. Next, we have One-Eyed Mask, which gives you an overshield when you kill an enemy that damaged you. This one is great for survivability and can often catch enemies off guard since they aren't expecting you to have an overshield. If you're a player that is struggling with survivability, this exotic could be the difference maker for you since it will give you the upper hand coming out of any engagement you win. Lastly, we have Dune Marchers, which increases our sprint speed and also gives us a melee chaining effect that does 85 damage to enemies in a 20 meter radius, which is just insane. Dune Marchers is my recommendation for this build, since the added slide distance and sprint speed is great for getting in and out of sunspots very quickly, along with the added benefit of making you incredibly deadly in close quarters situations. It's crazy how many 1v3s you can win with this exotic because of how devastating the chaining effect is combined with the ability to slide in with a shotgun and close the gap on opponents very quickly. As you can see, all these exotics have their place in this build, but it will come down to what aspect of these exotics you value the most. Overall, this Bottom Tree Hammers build boasts one of the most potent neutral games in Destiny 2 that creates the opportunity to go on long killing sprees with sunspots and is complemented by a super that is just as deadly. If you're looking for the best Warlock build for 2021, check out the top of the screen or check out my video at the bottom of the screen if you want a deeper breakdown of Path of Burning Steps versus Dune Marchers.